Ladies and gentlemen, welcome and thanks for joining. What a surprise, now even the U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen admits that the usage of U.S. dollar as the world's reserve currency is in rapid decline. Let's dive into this today. Hi, I am a former investment banker and Wall Street veteran with a wealth of experience to share with you. On this channel, I provide insights on investing, recent events, and geopolitics to assist you with escaping the madness that has now become our new reality. So let's get started. According to this Bloomberg table, the usage of the US dollar as the reserve currency has gradually declined from 72% down to 58%. Not yet factoring in that the US dollar saw a hopping 8% decline in its share of global reserves in 2022 alone, causing some to question whether the dollar's days of dominance are over. And now even Janet Yellen, in her recent address admits this ongoing trend and even acknowledged that this shrinking trust in the greenback is has something to do with the imposed sanctions on Russia. There is a risk when we use financial sanctions that are linked to the role of dollar, the dollar that over time it could undermine the hegemony of the dollar. So there we have it. Looks like that even senior U.S. officials start to admit that the whole thing is kind of backfiring. And this development is significant and irreversible. And it is not just the part of the sanctions that has a negative impact on the U.S. dollar. It is also the irresponsible spending of the U.S. government, which has gobbled up more than $32 trillion of debt. Debt that will now need to be refinanced at much higher interest rates as a result of the recent Federal Reserve interest hikes, probably tripling the interest payments over time if the interest rates are kept at the current levels. This would mean that the U.S. government would have significantly less money left over from tax collection, and what do you think will they do as a result? Will they cut government spending, or will they fill the gap by even taking out more debt, effectively paying off old debt by taking out new debt? At the moment, the Federal Reserve is not allowed to monetize the U.S. government's debt directly. This is done by convoluted detours via the banks. But wait for it. Once the amount of debt gets too high and the pressure too large, politicians will find a new way of debt monetization, or in other words, continue to force their existence, which will lead to the achieving the true accredited status of a banana republic, just printing whatever amounts they need, unless they want to default and lose their power, which is another alternative route. And if this was not enough pressure on the US dollar already, the BRICS creation of a gold or commodities-backed new currency for international trade will do the final blow. That backing alone would be reason enough for more countries to ditch the U.S. dollar, which is not backed by anything other than false promises, imposed oppression, and lost hopes. Another problematic factor is that the Federal Reserve officially connects its interest rate policy with the rate of inflation. Now if the U.S. dollar gets under pressure due to money printing and diminishing trust, then all commodities, products, and services which have to be bought with the dollar will become more expensive. And as a result, this will fire up inflation which will force the Federal Reserve to raise interest rates even more. Which then in turn leads to more irresponsible fiscal policies by the government because they even have less money available from tax income, also factoring in recessionary forces. And then this carousel of doom turns faster and faster. People in the U.S. just do not know what privileges they really had with their currency being the reserve currency and how much of their wealth was stolen from the rest of the world as a result. This is the true privilege, not the stuff that is constantly repeated by the media, blaming different types of the population as the culprits of inequalities, deflecting the anger away from the true perpetrators, the corrupt politicians. But that's another story. True history is written here. I am just a bit concerned about how this transition will play out in the end. Will the failing superpower blame some other superpowers for its demise and escalate it into World War III? And or how will the people of that demising superpower be treated by the new rulers? I guess we have no other choice than to stick around and find out. Time will tell. Anyways, that's it for today. Do you agree with these conclusions? Please share your views in the comments below. If you found this video insightful, please give it a like and share it. Hope to welcome you as a new subscriber. Thank you for watching and all the very best to you.